the next speaker is um, became very famous. The next speaker is Audrey White. That made her laugh. Um, and Audrey White, you might remember, was the uh, uh, left activist in Liverpool um, who um, buttonholed uh, Keir Starmer and really upset him. She was expelled almost immediately, of course. Um, but uh, Audrey White, um, uh, renowned Liverpool left activist, your turn. And you're muted. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, I'm on a phone, but I just couldn't get my um, my iPad uh, to work very well. So, yeah, just to say, I, I do, in some ways I'm resenting just being presented as doing that because I, I did make massive gains for women uh, with regard to uh, the dispute in the 80s that led to changes, uh, you know, changes uh, in the law on sexual harassment to protect women in the workplace. So I've sort of really like a bit, well, no, hang on. You know, I've done a little bit more than confront um, confront uh, Keir Starmer. But I just want to say that um, the whole idea of starting a party has been with the left for a hell of a long time. And we've started numbers of parties uh, over many, many years, and some of them are still uh, recruiting um, here, there and everywhere. Today, we've got, a, we've got a rash, we've got a whole rash of parties opening up um, you know, every time you turn around. Um, and we're desperate, you know, the work, we're desperate. The working class has got nowhere to go. So, you know, we've got campaigns. There's no lack of, of activity of people getting a new political education through struggle, through being involved in the picket lines, campaigning for the, the National Health Service and all the rest of it. There is absolutely no, uh, there, is no there isn't an absence of uh, willingness for people to be involved. We just don't have a mass vehicle, such as the Labour Party was invented to be, uh, to, to be the political voice of the working class, because it's been totally wrecked. I mean, a lot of us, I've got to say this before I go on to make my point, is a lot of us are so damaged by the Labour Party, really damaged and bitter about the role of some of their in Liverpool councillors, uh, officials, um, all the rest of them, the viciousness of it, which some of it you've seen in the Labour files. Uh, and it's been experienced up and down the country. It's not unique to Liverpool. So there's a lot of resentment about the role of the, of the Labour Party. But then again, we also have to recognise that the Labour Party is not just made up of the Parliamentary Labour Party and all the poisonous characters, that there is still within the Labour Party, you know, a, a membership, and it still is a mass membership of people. And are there genuine people in there? Well, yet, of course, there are. There's people who are hoping that if they keep their heads down and bide the times, it'll suddenly materialise or hope that they can work towards change in the Labour Party. And you can't dismiss that. You can't dismiss the fact that these, some of these people haven't had the same experiences uh, of I, you know, that I've had, I've had years and years of fighting and, and abuse and filthy lies made about you. I exposed them in the Jewish, uh, by suing the Jewish Chronicle and so on. So there's a lot of mixed feelings over the Labour Party, but you know what we have to say? It's only the Labour Party. We can't ignore it, but then we can't be obsessed with it either. There's all, there's a mass movement out there. How do we pull it together? And, and I think all of these groups are fabulous. We all respect each other. We've got to build our respect for each other. And we've got to have a network, a network that will become perhaps the em an embryonic party. Or this is the beginning of the beginning of a party. But it's got to be, no, no egos. It's got to be uh, uh, something that assists, uh, assists any of the campaigns, any of the parties. You know, we've got the SWP, we've got the um, Enough is Enough, we've got Tusk, we've got uh, Salt of the Earth, we've got the Breakthroughs Party, we've got our ev endless number. How do we bring us together? And, you know, we have to say, that we can be brought together. We've got to be brought together. We don't have to materialise something new 
these people are, we've all been campaigning for years. We've been campaigning for years and we could have a network right across the country right now, united on policies. Now, and you know why we need to be united on policies, not just on a, a leader, one leader, oh, let's have Mick Lynch, oh, let's have Jeremy, oh, let's have so-and-so. What we need to do, because they hit us by destroying our leaders. So our, the, the leadership has to be the policies. The policies are what is important. And I'm sure there are a number of policies that every single group, every single group agrees with. That's got to be the beginning of everything that we have obviously the basic things, there's probably 10 or 12 uh, things that we could just say now, you know, nationalization, council houses, um, education, free education, all these things, there's, there's about 12, 10 to 12 points. Let's have those basic principles out there. Let's ask anybody, a single independent person, like that, um, the chap that's just been on speaking now, great. But what are your policies? How do we know what the policies are of somebody on the other side of the country? Or, or, or how can we help them if they, do, if they do fight for those policies? If we have a network that anyone can join, organisations can join, right? And that we unite, identify ourselves with a logo and a name, we don't, we don't dictate um, strategy. We don't put any demands on any group or any person except to say, do you agree with these principles? We've got the beginnings of a party then, or at least we've got an organisation that's coherent, that will represent, that's united, that's coherent, and will move forward uh, on behalf of the working class. And if we don't do that, we don't make policies, the thing that we discuss, the things that we um, join together on, uh, we are lost to the wilderness. We really are. So if you've got, you know, a group here, I've asked people, um, I've asked people, well, you know, what are your policies? You know, who said, got in touch with me, wanted to say, would you be interested in joining such and such a party? And I go, we need to be united on the policies. And if we're not doing that, we're not having public meetings. We need an organisation, a network that will absolutely support, um, you know, will have at their fingertips research so that when anyone is standing who supports the basic principles as an MP or a council or whatever, we can help those people with resources. And when I say resources, I don't just mean money or whatever, that we can. Give them the research. We have a pooled research for people to put across the arguments for nationalisation. And what do we what do we mean by nationalisation? Do we talk about compensation? Do we talk about you know just seizing these assets and all the rest? They're the discussions we really need. We've got so many things we need to discuss. A person who's good. Uh, particularly brilliant on the National Health Service, may not have, um, you know, what I would say, the correct position over war. So we need to have those discussions as a body of people, as a network, so that we, we, we make sure that we don't let the working class down. It's too critical. The situation is too critical. I'm too old and, the, and I'm too impatient. And the young need to hear radical programmes. The young aren't as involved as they should be because we're not radical enough. If we're not putting forward what we're standing for in a cohesive way, in a united way, we really are um, failing because the message isn't getting out there when we're split the way we are. Um, and yet, collectively, we would be an absolute threat to Keir Starmer, the British, the establishment, and we would um, have the strength of solidarity between all of us. Um, it's not just a question of 
um, uniting for the sake of uniting. It's in terms of we can organise meetings together, pub national meetings, local meetings, draw on the strength of every single little, you know, even the little the little campaign that's going on down in the gardens here. By me, we've all got them, a little campaign, a National Health Service campaign, a campaign for the planet. You know, every single campaign needs to be under an umbrella network. You've we'll got call... one minute left, Audrey, okay. one minute left. Yeah. We should call ourselves something. Right. And we should have a logo that identifies th that we are all together on the on a with a po political agreement over basic principles. And we can move forward like that. All the other things we can we can leave, we can come back to, we can develop over the years, but it will be an embryonic organization that would hold. Uh, a force against the the stormtroopers of of Starmer, the Tories, the media, and everything, and we would really be strong. And I think that's what needs to happen. And I'd like to see, you know, that we as an organisation, if it, just say for instance, let me just just make this point. For instance, if the, uh, a party grew out of the SWP or um, enough is enough, or whoever it is. So long as they have those basic principles, we wouldn't care. Egos would, wouldn't be, um, I'm just looking at the chat there, wouldn't be an issue because we would be fighting for those policies and we would pull a united front on those policies to the working class and they could see, let's finish on this. We united behind Corbyn because of his manifesto and because of the, what he said. And those are the ideas we need to unite uh, behind again. And we need to be a powerful force on behalf of the working class. And we can do that. Wow, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Audrey. Um, a lot there. Um, I like the phrase collectively. Collectively, if we act collectively, we can be a real threat to Starmer and to the establishment. 